Hi there, Tony from Crew AI. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to get structured, consistent outputs from your Crew AI tasks. If you're not familiar with tasks in Crew AI, it's essentially another primitive of Crew AI. And what it is, is essentially a unit of work that's given to an agent to perform and actually get an output from. So think of it as you as an employee, or maybe you're not an employee, but just imagine an employee. They need a job description and they also need KPIs to actually measure it that they're actually meeting those goals in a sense. So same thing with AI agents concept. So tasks are things that are given to an agent to perform and take action on and actually provide an output after that. So let's get to the code and show you exactly how this works. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, in this code that I have here, I have a crew that essentially goes and gathers the latest AI developments in on the web. So it goes using ServerDev, it's going to scrape all the links of the latest AI given a specific topic. In this case, I gave it, I'm going to give it a topic of AI agents in 2024, since that's really something that's really interesting at the moment. And I'm going to give it a date of today, which is going to use the date time function there. And it's just supposed to go out there, gather some report of AI agents uh, topic, for example, you can pick a different topic there if you want, but for this case, I'm using AI agents. It's supposed to go do some research, get that research and generate a final report that I then can actually consume uh, in a much nicer format in a, in a sense. It will be in a markdown file at the end of it. So quick, let's just get started here with going over my agents. So I have three agents here and the first agent is a researcher and like a it says here, it's a senior data researcher. And the goal for it is to uncover cutting edge developments in a given topic, which is in this case, I'll give it as AI agents in 2024. And the backstory is, this is more of like the job description. So you're a seasoned researcher with a knack for uncovering the latest developments in a given topic, known for your ability to find the most relevant information and present it in a clear and concise manner. And then we have the reporting, uh, reporting analyst here. It's just gonna take the information that the first agent generated, which is from the research. And then it's gonna create a, analysis based out of that information, and then finally pass it to the formatter who's gonna just essentially put it in a format that I want and bring it back to me in a markdown file in a specific order that I need. And then we have uh, tasks now. So each agent needs a task. So for my research agent, is, this is their task. And their description here is conduct a thorough research about a specific topic that I give it to it. And the expected output that I need from this agent is a list with 10 bullet points of the most relevant information about the given topic that I'm going to give it to in this case. And then the agent that will do this job is, of course, the researcher. And then the output file for once it finishes their task, I want them to output the output that they have generated from that task in an output folder under research.json. So I want that to be in JSON format. And then we have a reporting task, which is essentially going to be assigned to the research, uh, the, the reporting analyst. And it's going to do the reporting, kind of gather in, insights from that research, and then generate a, a report with the main topics uh, and, and uh, full section of information. Here, I've just tell, I've told it to format as Markdown without the signs, but I want it to be in JSON. So this line doesn't really matter in this case. So the output file, I want that to be in JSON as well. And then we have the formatting task, which is the final task that we need to give it to the final formatter agent. And essentially what it does here, I've given it some couple, I think about 12 instructions here on what it needs to do. And this is the one that is going to generate the final markdown file that it's going to be in a structure that I want it to be. So for example, here you can see I've told it to use proper markdown headers and I've given it an example there, just more like one shotting it as well. And then include emojis. And of course, who doesn't love emojis? And then format key findings into bullets, add proper spacing, uh, just regular extra information that I want to give it to here. And then the expected output that I need from him, it's uh, or from this agent is a beautifully formatted markdown report with proper structure, spacing, citations, and visual elements that enhance readability and presentation. Yeah, keep in mind that we want citations on it as well. So that way we can track if it's hallucinating on some of the report for sure. And then we are assigning that to the formatter agent. And then for context also, we wanted to take the context of the, of the first two tasks. So the first task, which is does the research and then the analyst. So we wanted to keep the context of those and use that within its final task here and what it does. And as, as I as said as well, it's going to generate a report.md file here as well. So let's look at our crew.py file on how we actually enforcing. So if we were to run that with just without having any structured output, like using pydantic models in this case to make sure that it comes out in a structure that we want. If I run the agent the first time, it would generate maybe in a different format that I I'd wanted. Maybe it would add a topic, findings, relevance, and source. But then the next time it would not do that at all. It would not adhere to that. So 
How do we force it to make sure that it actually generates exactly as we want? This is where the output by Dantic and output JSON comes in. This is the structured output section of it. So here we would create within your crew, you would create uh, two, uh, a couple models, depending on how much you want to go in depth in terms of how your information you want it to be. But in this case, I've generated, I want to say one, two, three, four, four models in this case uh, of Pydantic output. So we have the first one is the research point. And for this one, essentially, I just want the topic of that research that it gathered. I want the findings that came out of that. And I also want the relevance, um, why this finding is relevant or important in this case. Why should I care in a sense? And then the sources, I wanted to have a description, which is, you know, source with title and URL. And so I want that to have each source attached to each um, source that it, that, that it produces as well. And then we have research output, essentially kind of inherits this first model here as well, and a list of research findings, and then a brief summary or overall findings of all of this report that it generated. And then we have the final executive report section. And this one is the one that adds, or we make sure that it adds the emojis, adds title as the content uh, section, has the key insights and the final recommendations at the end as well. And also making sure that it has the sources are added in there as well. So that covers that as well. And then we have the executive report generator at the end of it. So this is the one that's going to generate the markdown. At the way. I was just kind of making sure that whatever outputs come from the agents, from the tasks themselves, they get validated against these models to make sure that they adhere to this structure. And that's why it keeps it more of like a consistent structure that you can depend on as well. And so we have the extra spaces here as well, you know, report sections, we have the next steps, and then we have the sources for each of the section. And after that, our regular code comes in. So we have our crew base here class, which, um, you know, has all the agents that we need. We have the research agent, we have the reporting agent, uh, formatter agent. And then when we cut to the tasks, and this is where, how do we use the models that we've defined up there? You would use it within your tasks. So if you come to each task here, for example, for the research task, because that's the one we wanted to do research, we are assigning that the research output, which we built up here already, which is this research task output. And so for the first task, we assigned that here, and you would come here and do output output JSON, underscore JSON. And so we're assigning that and we're telling it, hey, once you do research, format it in the structure we gave you up there and make sure that it, it's validated against that to make sure that it adheres to that. And then output, it's going to output that into uh, an output folder that we'll see on the side as well there. And then we have the reporting task, same thing, but this time we wanted to just output by Dantic. And we've already defined that up there as well. So just output that as well. And now here we have uh, the formatting, which it's already, we don't need to define it for it because it's already, it's going to inherit from this, from this one up here as well as the final markdown file. And here we define our crew, which is essentially a crew you can think of. Yeah, this is my crew. It's usually your buddies or something of the sort. So same thing here, assembling all of them together and getting ready to run them. Now we go to the main file here, which is of course importing the crew itself, daytime. And then here is just the running portion. So on inputs, this is where I'm adding the topic of which I wanted to do research on, which is AI agents in 2024. And then we have date. It's just going to get that date time there. And this is really to make sure that it gives me a report for, I know which report was for which day, for example. And we just run it. So let's go ahead and give it a spin and see what it outputs for us. And just for your awareness as well, I'm using GPT-4 or Mini. So it might take a while, a little bit for some of it to just go through it, but let's run it. And as this starts up and run, we should monitor here on this side. We'll see eventually once it starts, it finishes each specific task. For example, you've seen here, it's gone and done the research. It's it. This is what it input into the server dev search. And it actually searched a bunch of results. We see some results that is generated here. Now, the next step right now, what it's doing, once this outputs are, are, are re returned from the age, from the, from the task itself, it's actually going and validating against our Pydantic model and making sure that it matches that out, uh, format that we want. And now it actually finished the research. So the researchers finished their job. Now it's moving to the next agent to actually get the analyst to do the analysis there. So if we look at what the researcher has already done, this is the output that is generated. So we can actually just close the side and I'll show you a snippet of it. So this is the JSON. I know that this is JSON. So it's consistently a good JSON file that is a valid JSON. So if you didn't have the Pydantic, Sometimes it would generate a JSON, sometimes it wouldn't, or it would generate JSON, but then it would add extra text at the top that would ju just then break the JSON at that point. So this is why 
having structured output is very important. And you can see it's structured it the way we want it. So you see the topic, and then you have the findings, you have the relevance, why this is important, and then the sources, you have the title and the link to the source itself. So this is really cool. So it's doing the, the research, gathering all the websites and all the details, going through each, and then generating this final output here as well. And let's see what else has been generated. So we have the research.json. Uh, we have the report now. So the report agent has finished the report. And since this is also another JSON file, I don't think it's structured the way we want it. So that's easy. Just do option if you're on Mac. Option Shift F, and it should format that file as you need. Or you can just go ahead and click on the file, right click, and then click on format. And here you can see it's already you know generated it. So we have the report title. Generation date, which is today, executive summary, and then uh, key findings as well on that side. We have key finding, key finding, key finding, key findings for each. And then we have the report section. I, it just continues. And it also has the, the links as well. So that looks pretty good. Now let's go ahead and see if it's, yeah, so it's generated the final report here. So it's in, and it's in Markdown. So we can actually preview this and see how it looks like in properly structured Markdown. So if you already have that extension within your, IDE, you can actually see it here. So here it's generated the final output and let's see how it looks like. So in this case, we have AI agents 2024, transformations and future directions. And it's added extra emoji there. And it has table of contents that we have asked it to have. So we have executive summary, key findings, recommendations, market growth, independence of AI agents, generative AI advancements, productivity enhancements, modular AI systems, interactive knowledge synthesis. So a bunch of stuff here, of course, right? And then we have the next steps, and then we have sources at the end. So let's just look through this scan really quick. So it has some information. So executive summary uh, in 2024, AI agents are experiencing significant advancements. Okay, that seems accurate, of course. And then key findings, AI agents market is projected to grow from 5.1 billion US dollars in 2024 to 47.1 billion by 2030 with a CAGR of 44.8 during the period. So, and it also cites the source here. So if you go to this source, you can see it's saying it's globalnewswire.com. And this was an article that was released on uh, September 11. So, oh, November 11, sorry. So this is pretty interesting. And then we have by 2024, AI agents have become more autonomous, leveraging LNP and all that. So you can see the source there as well. And this is pretty good because then it gives you the source where you can go read more or verify their work in a, in a sense. So we have chatbots. And then if you go to recommendations, invest in developing AI agent capabilities to meet emerging demands and monitor market trends and stay ahead of competitors, leveraging AI technologies. And then market growth, of which it's gone over a little bit there. And we have key insights, the expected market growth. Okay, recommendations there as well. And then as sources there um, as well. And then independence of AI agents. So you can see, we're gonna go over and over and over and over. So it, it gives you the report and gives you the final kind of stack sources there. And this is pretty cool that it can do this. And it goes and does research on a bunch of stuff and then brings it to you. Some of them, I didn't know some of the stuff that it, it did on the previous runs. And so it's pretty cool to see that it can cite it and I can go read a, something that's really interesting. So the goal of this really is to show you why you should use those two properties that we have within tasks. So if you go within tasks, having that pedantic output and also JSON output, I think that's very important to have a more structured way of and consistent way of producing the output that you get from the LLM to structure to meet your, your demand. So hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.